Dan Garcia. I go by Danny G. I'm a professional wrestler. A uh, Lucha Lord. A tattoo collector. A fashion model. And a gangster. And this is my story. I was born and raised in Albuquerque, New Mexico. A very, very beautiful place. It's known for the beautiful scenery, beautiful balloon fiesta, the green chili, and uh, you can't forget the lowrider scene. But also in this city, uh, there's another side to it, darker side. It's no secret New Mexico has an issue with gangs, but our problems could be getting worse. That's right, Jessica. Gangs in New Mexico are nothing new. In fact, for some families, it's tradition. I'm from a neighborhood called Martinez Town. It's a historic neighborhood in Albuquerque. I got ranked into my neighborhood when I was about 16 years old. From the Yemen town, roll through your hood and clown. Fear when we come around, cause we get down. The MT till the day that I die. Representing Bookie Town, Budo 505. Walking down my path, I'm taking a stroll up through me, Vod. You're in the north side of Bookie. It's the down and When you're in that gang life, there's a lot of bad things that come with that kind of lifestyle. Violence. Um, you get exposed to a lot of drugs. You're around a lot of drug addicts. Your friends start doing drugs. You start selling drugs. Uh, I've lost homeboys in the streets to gang violence, drug use, and you know, being addicted to drugs. And, uh, some are locked up and never ever gonna come back again. I've lost one of my closest friends, Jason Hartnell. We call him Demon. Somebody I grew up with. Um, he's a father, he's a good dude. One of my closest homies, somebody um, that's always been there for me. But with Jason, you know, his life was cut short. Um, unfortunately, he leaves behind uh, two daughters. And, you know, I do everything I can to keep his memory alive. I always go visit him when I can. He's one of my closest best friends, and it hurts to lose somebody like that. Um, I lost uh, other homies as well. Papa Adrian, uh, rest in peace, Toro. Another death that really hit me really, really hard, which was a life changer for me, was AJ. AJ was one of my childhood friends growing up, who was a really, really talented basketball player, really, really good at sports. Down for his shit. AJ loved gang life. He loved being a Martin Stone. He loved everything about it. Um, unfortunately, AJ's life was cut short. He was around the wrong kind of people. Um, and they ended up killing him for his Turkish necklace. One of them ended up pulling out a shotgun. Uh, shooting him. And the next morning, the PM guy who reads the meters in the houses ended up finding him, calling the police and reporting it. When NJ passed, it hit me deeply. Uh, it was a major eye opener. It made me realize I have to do something with my life and I need to do it quick, otherwise. I made it down a path that I might not return from. But uh, I did move down to San Antonio, Texas. I started training. I Texas Wrestling Academy, which is formerly the Shawn Michaels Wrestling Academy. The head trainer was Rudy Boy Gonzalez, somebody I respect. I actually look at him like a, a father figure who broke me into the business. He's an OG in professional wrestling. 
After graduating the Texas Wrestling Academy, I had my first match it was on my birthday in a small little town outside of San Antonio called Pleasanton. I loved wrestling and I loved everything about it and you know from there I started picking up as many shows as I could. All the people they come down, the whole family comes down and they treat you like a celebrity. You take pictures with everybody, you sell a lot of merchandise and the fans just really appreciate it of me. I actually picked up a big fan following in Arizona as I wrestled for the Arizona Wrestling Federation. In the sport of professional wrestling, and mark my words when I say the sport of professional wrestling, is a competition between gladiators. Somebody's gonna be the best. But tonight, Denny G, I'm approved. I'm gonna be the best Arizona Wrestling Federation champion in the history of Arizona. Danny G is the very best Arizona Wrestling Federation has to offer and he has been moving it in space in the recent weeks and months. Almost the last year he had gone without his shoulders hitting the back. Danny G is a stunt. Danny G is a stunt. There's a reason why he is the champion. Danny G, by the way, impressing the living hell out of him right now. Oh my goodness! Right into the oh, shoe cover! Yeah. That's it! Don't break her right here, might do it. Danny G he was able it. to get out of the block. Into an armbar, he's got him, he's got him in the he's arm got him. Tap again. out, tap out. Now, Danny G wrenching it in yeah, tighter. He's, he's gonna tap, man. He's gonna tap. He tapped. He's tapping. Danny G has he retained the championship it. here. I've done TV shows been featured in magazines, I've had action figures, t-shirts, uh, I picked up some major sponsors on my road in wrestling. Uh, one of my major sponsors is City Lopes, who is a uh, Chicano clothing company out of California. They also even gave me a um, brand of uh, uh, City Lopes that actually had my name on Danny G. So with picking up all this kind of stuff, you know, I started branding myself. I started getting myself out there. A lot of people started noticing exactly who I am and what I do. I could be cruising, and, you know, driving my car down the central where everybody cruises. People would come up to me and shake my hand, show me a lot, you know, a lot of it. I get a lot of love in the city. I find myself making money, going to a bunch of different cities, having a good time. Going out to the clubs, buying VIP, popping bottles of champagne, having your own section, food, women, so many girls hanging out with girls, living the rest of their life, chilling with my going out doing promotional events. Using models as displays and 
Some of my cars for car shows. You're only caring about the party life and acting wild and having a good time. And you start making mistakes in your matches and you start losing track of focus. You start feeling unmotivated. And it all came to an end. Um, I was going to Phoenix for Arizona Wrestling. I'm in this four-way match. During one of our spots, I jump up, he runs underneath me, and I'm coming down. My leg buckles and my knee twerks. So right then and there, I heard this huge pop. I couldn't stand back up and I knew something was wrong. End up finishing the match, I uh, go to the back of the locker room, I end up taking off my gear and my knee was blue, purple, swollen, it did not look right. I got all these bookings lined up throughout the whole year. It's international matching, Costa Rica for my first time, um, everything's going smooth. And then I get hurt. I still end up taking off to Costa Rica. Um, and mentally I'm telling myself like, oh my gosh, please like, be careful whatever you do. Get this, you know, I'm in the most beautiful place in the world. Spring volcanoes to the right of you, you got a beautiful beach to the left of you, you got these beautiful sunsets and all these happy people. And you're in paradise, bro. I had a lot of self-reflecting going on, you know, I'd spend hours just sitting on the beach. Uh, looking into the ocean, you know, half of me is wondering about what's gonna happen in the future. And then the other half is just proud and um, excited that, you know, if this really is the end of your career, you know, you've done a lot. You've seen some cool places. You've been around and done a lot of cool shit. The day does come, uh, I arrive at the arena. The promoter is aware that I have a 20 CL. I'm gonna need to do the most minimum I can to stay safe. Time is now. Danny G. We got the Lucia Mania Costa Rica poster. Movie at the arena. Lucia's. My knee is nowhere near where it needs to be. But I gotta do what I gotta do out here. Hold it down for USA. Hold it down for Nuevo Mexico. Danny G style homie. I end up lacing up my boots, putting on my gear. You know, my legs still all jacked up, but I came too far to go back right now, homie. I end up having a match. I know my body, and my body couldn't take any more pressure on that knee, so after two minutes in, I ended up taking my partner, and he ended up taking over the match. I was able to still cut a promo, um, get the microphone, and actually thank the people of Costa Rica for allowing me to perform in their arena and uh, letting me uh, be a part of the roster. You know, once I got back home to Albuquerque, I did actually have my ACL surgery, I believe April the 26th. And um, having ACL or reconstruction surgery, it really put me in a really, really dark place. Mentally, man, it just made me feel so helpless. Um, not knowing if I'll ever be able to return or what kind of athlete I would be if I was able to return. You know, and all this stuff is going through your mind. And, you know, the helpless feeling of, you know, needing help walking. All this stuff, 
um, that you're trying to build for, you know, puts you in a mental state where you're just completely exhausted. Being out on rehab for an entire year, um, I use the time wisely. I use the time to rebuild myself. And during this time, I'm uncertain if I'm able to even perform at the level I was performing before. So a lot of things are still going through my head, but I'm still pushing through rehab. I'm still pushing my body. I'm still going to the gym uh, twice a day, all that kind of stuff. During this time, I used it to pick up my ink collection. So, um, I'm a tattoo collector. I've always been infatuated by Chicano style art of you know, Aztecs, uh, Smile Not Cry Later, Clowns, Lowriders. I was getting new pieces almost every couple weeks. Um, just adding to the collection, filling up a bunch of spots. The adding to my look, uh, I lost a lot of weight. I focused on a lot of cardio. I shredded down a lot. Um, so I had a different body style as well. And I was just preparing myself, setting up for this big comeback when I'll be able to return to the ring. I'm starting to better network myself, um, rebrand myself, and dipping into the modeling and really picking up things. When it came to my return, like I said, it's like I wanted to come back with a new look, new music, a uh, new moveset, uh, new gear, basically just a whole nother band. I did actually make my return at Wildcard Rumble, like a Royal Rumble type of match where there's a countdown and, uh, after 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, wrestlers musical hit. Um, once I move the circuit and I step through, everybody will be going to you. Yeah. Oh, come on, back. That's something that, you know, it's really undescribable, you know, so it's something you can't buy, you know, it's something you're always going to remember for life. I ended up tag teaming with Andy again with another run. Um, we ended up capturing the Arizona Tag Team Championships the same night that I did return. Yeah. So unique, uh, the way we train, we're both trained by resident OGs. So when we're as a tag team, it's a, we put together really, really good matches. We've had a series of matches with another dream tag team, El Dragon and El Buster. Those two are absolutely some of the best luchadors I've ever seen. Meeting that tag team, you know, uh, they took a liking to us when I actually even traveled with them as a third member of their team. 
out to Juarez, Mexico. You know, being in the ring with them, they're absolutely awesome. And for them to take me in underneath the wing, uh, let me be me, it was amazing. So with wrestling picking up for me and uh, being able to return back to the ring, um, doing my tag team stuff, I had to set my eyes up on the next goal or the next big accomplishment I want to accomplish and that was putting together the show and being able to perform in my hometown in front of my own people in front of my family and with the idea to bring XCW wrestling to Albuquerque, New Mexico and put on uh, a super card somewhere that an event can go down in history what better place to do it than the Johnny Tapia Gym in Wells Park? Johnny Tapia is a professional boxer who overcame a lot of life obstacles, a lot of things that were thrown his way. Uh, he's made a lot of mistakes, able to pick himself back up and return doing what he loves. Uh, passionate about his city passionate about his upbringing, passionate about his people, uh, passionate about what he does, and you know, I'm exactly the same way. He's a hometown hero for us at Albuquerque, and to me personally, he's a role model. Having the event over there was going to be awesome. We set the big match, it's going to be to crown the first ever New Mexico state champion. Who is the top masked wrestler in the Southwest, guys? You can find out this Saturday at the Johnny Tapia Community Center as part of a pro wrestling Lucha Libre event. Joining us now in studio to talk more about what this event is all about, wrestlers Danny G and Caleb Manson. Gentlemen, thank you for being here, just sharing some of these stories during the break. This sounds like a crazy event. We're doing news shows in the morning on TV where we're promoting the shows. We're giving the host the Lucia Libre mask to have a better understanding of what type of entertainment we're bringing on that day. So you can actually see the real guy this weekend. What time did the festivities start? 7 p.m. the matches start, uh, September 21st. That's okay. 500 Mountain Road, Johnny Tapia Gym in Wells Park. Fantastic, guys. All right, so the day is here, September 21st. Uh, come out to the ring, very excited, look around the crowd. I see everybody I know, you know, family, friends, uh, everybody. match was over, the one, two, three was counted, I ended up winning the weeks, and I became the first ever XCW New Mexico State Champion. Deep down inside, I felt accomplished, I felt rewarded. Feels like I achieved it.